What's up team, today is a very special day. Today is my mum's birthday, which means I need to get her a card pretty sharp because we're going for a meal tonight. So there's a new card shop that's opened in the city that's really cool. Uh, and they do some really inappropriate and funny cards, which my mum's probably gonna like. But first things first, there's a new coffee shop open. I've not had a coffee yet, let's go. Awesome coffee. It's called Alchemista. It has little glasses in there that they serve coffee in which are like skulls. Uh, so that's right up my street. This is Norwich. This is where me and Leon live. It's our hometown and it's very, very awesome. I'm now just walking down like one of the main walks called Gentleman's Walk trying to find this card shop. Well, I know where it is. I'm going straight there to get a really inappropriate and hopefully funny card for my mum. Um, so let's see what we can find. I picked my brother one up for birthday and it's like a cartoon Wolverine and he's obviously got his claws out and it's like, I've got an itchy bum. So obviously that made me laugh because I'm immature like that. Ow, my ear! Oh, see the problem with this car? It's really hard to get in. I just caught my ear. Oh God! I picked up two cards for my mum. I didn't show you a lot of cards in there because some of them were so un-PC that I think I'd get a red strike from YouTube if I did that. And this one is very much like me because I am the worst for remembering birthdays. I hope you like your birthday card because it's also your present. It's not actually her present. Uh, we've got some from the flake flowers as well because she likes that kind of stuff. Anyway, we are now heading to the box because I have some massive stuff that I need to work on because if I don't fix these errors, I'm going to be very embarrassed next time I do a comp or the open comes round and I'm going to fall flat on my face. So, to the box. Let's do it. Time to train. What's up team, so we're at the box. I have lots to work on today. I have back squats. We know that I'm trying to get my leg strength up. I also, since I trashed my shoulder early part of this year, um, my, I haven't done much pressing. So my bench press is a lot, a lot weaker. My handstand push-ups are a lot weaker. So I need to start building that up. I went back to the doctors last week to see what the deal is with it. And they said, yes, it moves a lot, but if we were to do an operation, um, it could restrict your movement and it could make you worse than you are now. It's just one of those things, just deal with it. So I'm going to start programming in handstand push-ups, L-sits to handstands again on the parallel bars and see if I can get them moving. Obviously my back squats, but most importantly, pull-ups. When we did the lift-off, there was a workout at the end. It started with 25 pull-ups and I was shocking. And something that's going to consistently come up in the open in any comp I do is going to be pull-ups and I'm going to lose a lot of time on them if I don't fix them. So today, I'm going to spend some time on the rig just trying to figure things out and try and get fluid and consistent with them because at the moment I hold my hands up, I've let them go, I haven't been doing them um, and I feel it's something that I should have nailed by now. Let's do it. Okay, stable shoulders for pull-ups, snatches, anything like that are super important. I stole this from Zach the other week, not the resistance band, the exercise. This is one of the best things I feel you can do as a shoulder warm-up. You're going to get a band and you're going to hold it where you can feel resistance when your arms are right in front of you. Not here, so they're already resistance here. You're going to do 40 reps, pulling apart the band. After those 40 reps, pass it to a mate, let them go and do it three times each and it's just going to fire up your rear delts, your traps and basically pull your shoulders back in the sockets where you want them to be. Because what happens is we bench press a lot, or we sit down a lot, our shoulders kind of roll forwards, we become what we call kyphotic, and our shoulders don't quite sit in the ball and socket where they should, right? And it just makes our shoulders a little bit grindy, can be uncomfortable, can lead to rotator cuff issues. So, make sure you're protecting the back of your shoulders, or strengthening the back of your shoulders to protect your shoulders. Yeah, that burns. One sure way to mess your shoulders up when doing pull-ups and stuff is to hang off your shoulders rather than engaging your scap. You can do things like scap pull-ups to prove this and to kind of strengthen up, but let me show you something. There's a bar here, which if I hang from it and I haven't got my scaps retracted, which is my shoulder blade, my feet will touch the floor. If I do retract and my feet won't touch the floor and I'll be able to do pull-ups, keep the pull-ups and whatever through there. That shows, and I'm actually going to use that today because one of my weaknesses is keeping my back engaged. And if my feet touch the floor, I know that I've lost tension in my scaps. Let me show you. Got to be honest and say I don't rate gloves. I was just using them because I got I took a bit of skin off my finger, but I just seem to have no grip on them. I just don't get on with them.
Okay, those first kip and pull-ups are actually better than I thought. There's a few things that I'm not liking. One is my feet are coming apart. One thing I learned with muscle-ups, if you keep your fin feet pinned together, like it's a pound coin in between your big two, two big toes, knit them together, it keeps yourself nice and tight, stops you flailing around so much. And I don't like how much extension I have when I come through this side of, of the kip and pull-up. So you obviously you've got your hollow body position and you've got like, your open position. I don't like how big that is. So I want to try and just tighten things up a little bit because then hopefully I can keep more tension in the muscles, get more spring up, push away from the bar, come back down again. Let's try again. Okay, I feel that was a bit better. It's now just a case of keep working on that, refining it, and getting the reps up higher. We'll have a look at butterfly next because uh, they're much quicker. So for those who don't do CrossFit, you, a lot of people think, what the hell is that pull-up? Why are you doing it? And I perfectly understand it. There is reason for it. We do, most of our pull-ups are all done strict. We use kipping and butterfly pull-ups when time is an issue. Like we're in a competition and we need to complete a workout as quick as possible. It's about saving time. So I think in like the 50s, Frosby flop, high jump. Everyone was doing like a scissor kick over it. Some guy, I think it might have been Dick Frosby came, did like a back arch over the high jump. From then onwards, everyone did that because that was the best way for them to get as most height. For us, it's the best way we can get our chin above the bar, but do it in the quickest time possible. So that's why kipping and butterfly are used. And typically, it's more only in wads and kind of competitions. Most of the time, it's all strict stuff that's been programmed because in just your kind of natural place in the box, not everyone can do them. So sure, they get programmed in this technique, but the majority of the stuff is set as strict pull-ups or regressions of that with the resistance band or ring rows, all these kind of things. Right, I'll do one more set of them, then we're gonna have a look at butterflies, and then I'm gonna crumble on them because they're tough. Okay, butterfly pull-ups, this should be funny. I was just talking to Benji. Benji's gonna help us do some butterfly pull-ups. Right, butterfly pull-ups. Help, mm -hmm. he help a brother out. Woo! Oh! You idiot! Not my pre-workout over. Quick! Fuck it. So hands just outside the shoulders. I've just been starting with a little, just to get it moving. Try not to almost like let go when you land. So the minute, does it feel like you're jolting a bit? Yeah. Bottom? Yeah, okay, so that jolt is coming from you get a big gap and then bam, down. Yeah. Instead of almost like gradually putting on the brakes. Okay. So like... Oh, okay, it's has been See control. what I mean? Yeah, almost yeah. get yourself down and feel like you're almost pushing yourself into position. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what Benji said is one of the things that I struggle with, and it kind of puts me out of position, is when I come down from each kind of cyclical motion, it's kind of just oof, straight to the bottom. Everything tugs on my shoulders, tugs on my biceps, and everything. And it's not you're not trying to do a negative because that's going to just blow your biceps out, but a little more control, so it's not just gravity doing the work and your joints hanging on at the end. And I'll just pop the blister, so this will be fun. It's hot. And the moves will come through like that more. Yeah. Obviously smoother, but. That's so much better. See, that one little tip made a big difference for me. I mean, that was only three or four. I need to learn to do lots more. Look, there's Benji. I need to learn to do a lot more, and just slowing it down, and not just relying on gravity. As I said, my thing that I struggle with is keeping my shoulder blades down and back, and pinned down. So, if I'm coming down with all the force of gravity, it's very hard to pin them down. It's like an initial thing, rather than a, just ever so slightly controlled. Try that. Now I'm going to work on some l the handstands on the parallel bars. This is something I used to spend a lot of time doing and I really loved and I've not felt comfortable to do it since my shoulder injury earlier this year. Oh, those who don't know what I did, snowboarding, snapped my AC, snapped my curricular curriculum, snapped these two ligaments so the collarbones are floating. It's still quite bouncy, uh, but the strength is getting there, so uh, let's give it a run out. <laughs> Okay, turns out my shoulders are super sore, uh, so that hurt a lot. So I'm gonna have a little stretch off, release them off a little bit, then come back to that real quick. Actually, here's the ultimate shoulder stretch. Lace your fingers together behind, here, here, and then just take your bum away. Yeah, tight. Ready? 
Okay, turns out my anterior delts are a little bit sore for that today. It's when you get that twinge, so um, I'm going to squat first. Maybe I'll try roll them on the ball and stuff when I'm at the end. I just don't want to waste all the session trying to do that um, when my shoulders are sore when I can work on something else um, that needs doing too. So let's come back to that. Look who's just rocked up. I'll just say good morning, but it's, it's definitely early not afternoon morning. now. It's only two o'clock, Jonathan. Where have you been? I went to get snapped up by Rob. He's kind of like taking me, so I look a little bit oh, like... Oh, I bet that feels it's nice. It's almost like I've got Aquaman tattoos on my back now. It's great. And then I've just been at the dentist, and for the first time, I didn't have to book him for a fill-in, <laughs> which is great. And now, I'm going to do a couple of workouts from the TLM training plan. Oh! <gasps> <laughs> How's Mike your morning been? Yeah, very good, very good. I'm now going to get some lunch and come so back to William. You've got more, you've got more facial hair than me. I think I might grow it from it. Yeah, do it. I can't grow mine because it ends up looking like a massive orange. Leon literally me. goes to sleep and wakes up the next morning with the like thickest smirk. beard I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It can't, you just can't tame that stuff. It's so coarse. Big ginger beard. What you're seeing right here is a sneak peek of some of our training plans. Leon's just done some. Uh, Goblet squats there. I'm gonna think... change that. Why? That's too hard. <laughs> too hard. <laughs> too hard, all right. That, that one's too hard, we're gonna change it a little bit easier. That's why we're testing them. Hi, my name's Leon, just warming up. On your five kilos, have you hit it yet? No. Just going up to a one round match. So do it. Look how excited you are, shaking legs like a little giddy child. Probably lifting, isn't it? Oh, it's gone. No rep. Go up there. Time to get home for mum's meal. How's your day been? How's your day been? What's up team? I'm just back, just saying hello to the cats real quick. And I've got to get really pretty sharpish. Um, let me show you something. Come on cats, you can come if you want to. Excuse the house, it's a bit of a mess as always. Still trying to sort everything out. So as a lot of you know, I was a carpenter. And Rose said, can I build a uh, shoe cupboard? So I did. This is what I did at the weekend. Well, on Sunday, a little bit hungover. Uh, built a nice big shoe rack. Just got to fill in all the screw holes on the side. Boom, paint it white. Next job, all this has got to be railed out with these curtain rails. So all our, so I can actually find my clothes again, that would be nice. Uh, and then it's onto the bedroom where I think I've got to build a bed. My Rosanna is such a crazy cat lady. I'm gonna show you something that I think's a bit weird. Um, and not the type of thing that I'd normally film on the vlog. But Rose is teaching our cats to use the toilet and not the litter tray. It's like a done thing because Siamese and Burmese are quite clever cats. Don't I know it. They actually use a toilet. So you put all the litter around the outside, and as time goes on, you cut the hole bigger and bigger, until eventually, they, I thought she was about to use it, until eventually, they just sit on the seat and just do their business straight into the toilet, and you flush it away. In theory, sounds amazing. Oh, hang on. Case and point. She knew I was doing that. What a little hero. Well done, Luna. I would also just like to clarify, because I've never been some comments about it. That is not a used toothbrush. That is obviously used for cleaning or something, because we brush our teeth and we use this toilet. This is kind of the cat's toilet now, which is kind of irritating, because it's the only one with a bath in it. But I'm not one for having baths, really. I like, I'm a shower kind of guy, unless it's like Epsom salts and stuff for recovery. wonder how much I weigh at the moment. I'm guessing 80, this late in the day, 82 kilos, something like that. 186 pounds, actually 84 kilos, which is the heaviest I've ever been. But it's later in the day and I've got loads of clothes on, so it probably doesn't count. I'm probably like, I don't know, I, am, I do have a bit more body fat than I normally have, um, but I've been trying to get stronger, so I've been eating more. Um, yeah, is what it is, neither here or there, is it really? It's gonna probably get a lot heavier than that because I don't plan on eating any less anytime soon. I wanna hit that 150 back squat and that 90 kilo snatch and a 130 front squat and a 110 clean jerk, all that stuff I want. That means I gotta eat. <laughs> you sneeze to my face. I do need to get ready, but I just like playing with these guys and they just walk all over you. 
What do you want? The thing with doing fitness is you live your life in trackies and comfies, which is great on one side, but then the moment you get the opportunity to dress even remotely smart or wear something that's not that, it's like, yes, today I'm gonna get dressed up, and then you realize you haven't got really got any clothes. And all the clothes I've got really are hand-me-downs from my brothers because I never really have any reason to buy nice clothes. Um, and then the opposite, for people that work in an office, hate wearing suits, I get to wear a suit like once a year and it's like the best thing ever. I feel like James Bond. Anyway, uh, I'm now gonna go to my mum's meal. It's in the farmyard. Um, yard, I think it's called, in Norwich. Gonna eat a lot of food. I'm not drinking because I'm driving. Me and Leon are back at it tomorrow, going through the training plans and getting a load of content for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I helped you a little bit with your pull-ups and you enjoyed just hanging out with me for the day, drinking coffee, walking around Norwich. It is a beautiful city after all. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a massive thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Remember, every Sunday we have one of our kind of main fitness videos where we answer your questions, uh, which is what we normally do, or we pick a topic that we like to talk about and we go in on that. And then a couple of times a week, sometimes once, sometimes twice, we hit you up the vlog, which is a little bit more of our day-to-day -day stuff, uh, our training if we're doing that, um, and just that kind of stuff, and we normally are training. And I have two guitars there, and I'll, I'll play them for you one day. I'm not that good, but um, hey, why not? So on that note, see you guys.